A new season means a fresh start. Hi, hi, hi. Surviving our first season with Fulham wasn't easy, but the aim for the new campaign was to do a little better and get into the mid-table spots. Without a single player with 10 goals and a defense leaguer than Mario Baltelli's sink after setting off fireworks, transfers were needed. Sadly, Adder Abayo and Anthony Robinson wanted new challenges, posting to Leon while Anthony took his playing cards to his American pals at Leeds. No problem, there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. Last season, signing Nagolo was loaned to Maccabi Tel Aviv, while Congolo was sent packing to Al Ali. On the ends, Valeri was brought in for a cheap fee to fill in that left back with Joe Bryan backing him up. Nat Phelps made his loan permanent, Terracciano arrived on a free at right back, while in the middle, two guys came in. The first being Nathan, not this fraud, but he arrived for 8 million and to start alongside him would be Niakate coming from relegated Nottingham Forest. Finally, Leno was sent packing to Real Sociedad. So following a thorough check at several keepers, Jordan Pickford was the man to keep the net secured. I fancy myself here. I don't think so. The initial impression was that this was a terrible signing. But what do the fans know? The other transfers before the first game were Martin Neto on a free from Benfica, Marcos Leonardo of Santos, and of course, the return of Dan James. <laughs> so, beginning everything at Anfield, I began developing a 4 1 3 1 1 system. It later became a typical 4 3 3. I must be a tactical genius though, because Mitrovic opened the scoring in the third minute. He got messages in the summer about being a championship merchant, so this year, he was ready to prove every single one of those haters wrong. Unfortunately, the others didn't think the same, as Liverpool destroyed us. Jota, Nunez, and Salah didn't make my life enjoyable at all, and despite Dan James getting something late, a 4-2 loss was fair. In all honesty, the start wasn't going to be easy. In the first eight matches, five of them were against the top six teams. We're finished. So against Leeds, a victory was a must. Goals would eventually arrive in the final 10 minutes from Carlos Vinicius, However, that came at a sacrifice. Sacrifice? And subsequently, Dan James was out for at least three months. Oh, God. <laughs> the luck of the Welsh wasn't high as Harry Wilson got injured as well. Gotta keep Luke Harris in some bubble wrap. Once Watford were dealt with in the Carabao Cup, a deadline day signing was required. Oh, there's actually two. I promise you that tonight is gonna be a great night. First, we continued the Welsh vibes to the side, bringing in Brennan Johnson. The price was a little steep, although, he is quite versatile. Fabio, Fabio, Fabio. The kid has returned home. Fabio Carvalho on loan from Liverpool. Some other exits, Ivan Cavallaro left for West Brom, and Oscar Glug was loaned out to Bordeaux. Hope I pronounce it right for once. That's besides the point. The reason I wanted to loan him was to guarantee him playing time, which turned out to be the right call. After dealing with Norwich, we had to go through the gauntlet of hell. Wolves were the only non-traditional top six team in this run. But spoilers, they finished in the Champions League spots, and it showed. But Dan's turned into Ronaldinho. I don't know what you want me to do about that. With Zidane's dark arts, Chelsea were too much for us too. The next week saw us host Manchester United, and their former player Andreas Pereira shot them immediately. Unfortunately, they scored two near identical goals before we had time to catch our breath. Andreas wasn't having it though, as with him in the box to box role next to Neto, Brennan Johnson was able to find his run into the area for the equalizer. A fair draw, and Pereira loves these big games, as against Arsenal, the man kept chugging forward until Mitrovic had no choice but to send it, and he tugged it home, giving the Cottagers the advantage. The Gooners would equalize due to some questionable defending and goalkeeping. But this could have been worse? Oh, great. Despite initially scoring leading to Pep losing his mind, I'm so happy, happy new year. It'd be ruled out for offside. They were going to win. You just knew it. But it wasn't Holland who scored, it wasn't Dembele who fluffed these chances, but instead, we decided to give Mikel Marino all his space and he banged it off the post and in. I ended up trying to go for it, and we came close from Neto. Sadly, Dembele dribbled past our team, leading to Pickford pairing it straight to Foden. A 3-0 loss with Aston Villa straight after felt like a punch to the gut. Carvalho getting sent off didn't help. I was just there in the right area. Ah. The Carabao Cup fourth round was next. Are we have to play against them again? Very good. Look, I know Fulham's history in this competition. I can't hide away from fate. Plus, my defenders this season have been inconsistent. So, I decided to give Harvey Araujo a chance. I do know this much. I'm scared as hell. He's a kid from my academy, and if I'm going to have defenders dropping stingers, I'd rather be a guy that can learn. <laughs> to be fair, we kept it close until I went attacking at the end. But at least Mutual finally started scoring. Returning to the league, I wanted to give Harvey another game because I felt bad for putting him into that situation. Southampton seemed fine, especially with Marcos Leonardo getting the first and Mbabu following suit. Che Adams got one back, but Mitro was determined to be on that score sheet. Now, Harvey's rating wasn't good, so when we won a penalty, I thought what better way to improve it than giving him the pen? He 
missed and finished with a 5.7 rating. Okay, I felt bad again for embarrassing him in front of his family. So another start versus West Ham. None of my defenders wanted to help Pickford in the first minute. And we could only equalize thanks to the big serve for a draw. Are we improved? So let's play him against Crystal Palace. Okay, that's enough of this silly business. Finally! 17th place isn't a good look. Now granted, we have a much easier set of matches to look forward to. Although, what was needed was bringing the tried and tested Portugal to back. Plus facing a Middlesbrough side not ready for the prem. 3-0 result was what the doctor ordered. Now, it was time for the annual Newcastle at home drumming. Featuring a Mitrovic hat-trick, a Pereira banger, and Luke Harris putting the salt on the wound. Now, Nat Phillips was defending well. It currently didn't matter if it was with Diop or Nathan. Clean sheets started rolling, Everton included, although they kept their net safe too. Wofford then saw Dan James and Leonardo making sure our defending didn't go to waste. With Leicester City, Jamie Vardy would bring back the years, but Mitrovic got not just an assist, but a brace for himself, which was added with Shelley's goal. The clean sheets returned versus Brighton with a Brazilian and Norwegian leading us to another victory. Amazingly, we were in seventh. Yeah, you're not hearing that wrong, but of course, it had to be ruined by Manchester City. Worst of all, Dan James got injured again. I'm not happy at all. Visiting the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium was a little intimidating, but Lloris handed us a gift for an early lead. Inevitably, we began to show off our poor defending with Mbabu doing who knows what. This led to a loss, but we didn't allow Harry Kane or Son to score on us. No, we let their substitute freaking Borja Iglesias get a hat-trick with some of the worst marking I've witnessed. An elimination by Norwich in the FA Cup afterwards was nearly the final straw, until we actually performed well against Arsenal. Brennan Johnson found Carvalho to open the scoring. Regrettably, Pickford decided to do his best Simo Mignolet versus Jacques impression when Tobar shot the ball straight past him. The scoreline was fine, yet I wanted more. Alright, good switch. Harris, Camilus, great pass. Camilus Savage in behind to Johnson. <gasps> Shell the rule! <laughs> With this momentum shifting result, good form was back on the met. No, we lost to Southampton, despite almost doubling their XG. Frustrating stuff. And I can say the same about several defenders. No matter what pairing, it was very rare for both of them to have a good match. So I decided to scour the lands for one that could be more consistent. And I only had to ask Paina for advice. That's because Gonzalo Inazio was willing to sign for us. I just needed to sell some players to secure the deal. On deadline day, Carlos Vinicius was let go to Lille for 14 million, and I needed around 10. Crap! Earlier in the season, Niakate was someone who performed poorly, and a heated argument subsequently placed him on the transfer list. The guy trolled me for a few hours, but left for West Ham, and thus, Gonzalo was secure. We also signed young Serbian Jovan Milosevic, who is basically Mitro Light. Before that, we drew Aston Villa 2 all with these strikes in the last 19 minutes. Versus Brighton, Mitrovic gave us a 3-1 lead heading into the second half, so let's defend, is what I would say. But this is Fulham, of course we can't do that. And Natsu dropped a 6.5 on his debut, but he improved against Leeds as Mitro and Paina's tidy finish provided a 2-1 victory. Liverpool next had me expecting an L, but Joe Gomez tripped up Leonardo for a pen. With the GOAT returning from injury, he tucked it in. Following a trillion ricochets, Liverpool got so lucky and equalized. Prior to halftime though, Pickford made this ridiculous save which had me in two minds. What a save! But what the crap was that tech day? It was a big moment though, as in the ensuing moments after the break, with a basic throw in, we infiltrated their box, and Neto was bound for a 2-1 lead. The Reds would respond in about 10 minutes, but with 5 to go in the full 90, Mitro, no not Mitro, <gasps> Andres Pereira! Don't tease me here game, not like this, No. Well, that was short-lived. Nevertheless, I can't be mad, and while Inazio dropped a stinker, it's Liverpool. Congratulations. <laughs> Jamie Vardy decided to come to Craven Cottage and do this, which I couldn't believe, but we responded well with Shelley receiving a brilliant ball from Paina to round the keeper, and Johnson giving Mitro an easy tap-in. He celebrated like he knew he was the man. Minutes away from a deserved victory, Nicolas Pepe found a ball to Inacho for the equalizer. Guess who lost him? A visit to Vicarage Road provided one of the most wild matches in my tenure. Dan James celebrates a brace in the first 16, Sar gets a goal back because we can't mark, and prior to the break, Tom cleverly of all people smacked this hole. Wofford found the lead with 15 left on the clock, and despite Brennan Johnson equalizing in the 85th, Diop with infinite time headed a long pass straight to them, and a through ball later, it was 4-3. I was enraged, pushed everyone forward, and with hope nearly evaporated, a simple Mitro header gave Andreas Pereira a one-on-one, -on -one, he equalized. <sighs> Alright, I'll buy it. Inazio didn't play in that fixture, but he did in a 3-1 victory over Everton where Diop certainly made up for his mistake. Gonzalo still finished with a 6.5. He received the exact same rating versus Newcastle, partly because of the lead up to their equalizer, 
Pickford wasn't shining himself in glory either. The inconsistency of his goalkeeping was irritating. Shelly and Mitro both scored, but another late strike by the opposition left me soulless. The deflected pass to Wilson was of course off Inazio. At this point, Europe was attainable, and it'd be looking great if some of these draws went our way. A Middlesbrough victory made it seem possible with 7 to go, although drawing Palace wasn't as cool due to the chances wasted. The final stretch of the second season had, by the end, 4 of the top 6 scheduled and Spurs. Are you joking? Norwich was the sole positive in these final six matches. Not only did we hit blanks in the other five, but we conceded 17 times. I won't bore you with the several mistakes our defenders made, but to conclude, we improved by 10 points from the previous campaign, finishing in 12. The positive was being the sixth highest in goal scoring, Mitrovic had 19, Sheldon maintained a tally of 9, and Andreas Pereira was fantastic. Other parts of the attack can be improved, but little complaints on that end. The true grievances were the ones conceded. We had the fourth most goals against in the league, more than two of the relegated sides. There's something wrong here, and I need to figure it out ASAP if I want European football next season. I know it's still a beta, but Nazio had a worse match rating than Vanarama national level player Harvey Araujo. 